In this video, we're going to take a deeper dive into MobX and how you actually use MobX in a real application by building out this to-dos application. So let's start by actually printing these to-dos out. We have this to-do store again that's giving us two really basic to-dos. All they are is strings at this point. So let's go ahead and make a UL with LIs for that. We won't really mess with CSS, but we'll get it going for this example with a UL and LIs. Then I'm going to go ahead and pull those to-dos out of my props. I'm going to go ahead and map those to LIs. So there we are, our to-dos are now showing up. So let's go ahead and get this filter going. One great feature of MobX is we can actually real-time react to computed values. So if we were to filter this list by whatever this value is, that would be a computed value. And that's extremely easy to do in MobX. Let's start by getting the input going to actually real-time set this filter for us. Let's go ahead and print that filter here. We'll pull it in. Now let's go ahead and get an input that will real-time set that filter for us. There we go. So on change, we're going to fire this dot filter. So let's set that up. And this will be extremely simple. And there we have it. So now we're going to have a UL and we're automatically going to be able to change that and that will set the filter. You can see there we go. Our filter is setting. Let's go ahead and wrap this in maybe a div just to clean it up a little bit for now. There we go. So you can see that our filter is automatically setting. So let's go ahead and set a computed value now. And to do that, we simply import computed from MobX. Computed then will fire very lazily whenever it's needed to fire. So let's go ahead and make an observable or a computed value. And this is a git filtered to do's. So whenever our data changes, filtered to do's will go ahead and compute a new value. And we can just kind of basically check the filter and filter out all the to do's. So I'm going to do a case insensitive check. If it matches loosely our filter, then let's go ahead and filter them out. So let's go ahead and filter the to do's now. now. Let's say if there is no filter at all. So if there's no filter, then we're going to say that that's OK. We have not set a filter yet or if it matches the filter. So there we go. If no filter is set or if it matches the filter, then our results will show. So let's go ahead and save that. And now our to-do list will get an additional value called filtered to-dos, which is essentially to this React component no different than the to-dos array itself. So I can simply print out the filtered to-dos instead. There we go, that's reloaded and let's see if it works. Yep. If I do M, it works. If I do CH, it filters out. So now our to-dos are filtering. Let's go ahead now and clear out this filter, which we no longer need to see. And in its place, let's add an input that will allow us to create a new to-do. So we are going to do create new. And let's uh, set our create new up here. And all we have to do is filter out. We only want to create if key press 13, which is enter, has been pressed. So if and let's clear out our value once we create a to do. So now we're calling the create to do method on our MobX store. Let's go ahead and add that create to do method. There we go. Now we have a second input on the page and let's see if we add a new to do to the list when we hit key press 13. Yes, it does. Excellent. So now we have an input that's real time adding stuff to our list and we have a filter. Let's only view the tests. Let's only view milk. Excellent. That is working as well. So now let's go ahead and add maybe some check boxes and a little bit more value 
to the to-do store. And this will get into the concept of nested stores or nested observable objects from MobX. So for to-dos, we have the to-do store, but we wanna make this an array of observable to-do objects that have more than just a text string. They need to have a state, whether they're checked or not. And they also probably need to have an ID. So to do this, we're gonna actually create a to-do type. So let's go ahead and create a class of to-do. This could be done in another file, but to keep things simple, I'm just gonna add it right here. And it's gonna have some observable values on its own. So let's make an observable value ID and complete. and then a constructor for it. And then real time, we'll go ahead and create an ID, which we'll just use date now to kind of simulate an ID. That way it'll get a timestamp for an ID, that way it'll be unique. And it'll automatically be false by default. So then all we have to do is instead of pushing a value, we can just push a new to do with a value. And we'll just clear out this to-dos list now. And now let's see what happens. And now it'll work, or the store portion will work. You can see that if I add test and test one, they're not showing up because I'm adding them to the store, but now the store is inheriting an array of objects. So to map these out to an LI, I simply need to do to-do.value. And they will all work just fine now. Test, test one, test two, or test three. Um, we'll also at this point want to add a key to our to-dos li, so there's a unique key for each one. React needs this, I probably have a React warning. Yep, you can see I have a warning here. Each child needs a unique key prop, so let's go ahead and add that key, and that's where our to-do ID will come in handy, since the ID will never change. Excellent, that warning's gone. Well, let's make sure it's gone. Yep, that warning is gone. And let's go ahead and add a checkbox, why don't we? And let's go ahead and set the value to to do.complete. And let's also set checked to to do complete. So there we go. Now any new to do should automatically reflect the state of its object up here, of its observable object. So let's go ahead and test this out. Okay, it looks like it's doing good. To verify this, let's make the default to be true. So now all of our new to-dos should automatically be checked. Okay, very cool, that's working. So now let's go ahead and set a change method to automatically change that. And kind of as a little hacky quick way, I'm going to bind it to this, and I'm also gonna pass to-do as the first argument in there. So the first argument will be to-do here. So toggle complete we'll get the to-do of whatever was clicked. Now, if you don't like this way of doing it, you could also just totally pass in the ID, or you could even print the ID here on the input element, but it's, in my opinion, just as simple and is not gonna cause any problems to pass it in this way. So let's go to-do.complete equals the opposite of its complete status. Now, it's important to note here that if you don't like the coupling of the to-do list right here to the to-do store. You can see that I'm manually changing the to-do right here. What I could definitely do is do something that's more along the lines of actions with MobX. Whereas instead of changing the complete item within this component, I could fire off a to-do complete or a to-do toggle complete action, pass off the ID in something else outside of this module, outside of this React component could handle that action and update the store as a third party action. So you can still definitely do flux style actions in MobX if you like that abstraction, but for something that's not as complex as what we're dealing with here, or for something that's as simple as we're dealing with, it really doesn't need to have that level of abstraction. So let's test this out. And can we change it? Yes, we can. So let's go ahead and change this to be false now. And let's add one more feature. Now that we can complete some items, let's make a little button to clear those completed items. And let's say clear complete. And so we're just going to basically fire this.props.store.clearComplete. Of course, I can actually clear that out a little bit and just import clear complete. 
which doesn't exist. Let's go ahead and create that now. And I'm going to automatically bind it using an arrow function. So that way it is bound to this. It will always fire within correct context. And I can't really change this dot to do's. One of the differences, one of the big differences between observable arrays and plain arrays, uh, they act almost the same in every way, except for I can't erase it. I can't just point to a new object because then the reference is actually messed up. We have lost all our reactivity at that point. So what they do is they give you a replace method. So I can call to do's replace, which can now replace it with a new set of to do's. So I can go ahead and create the new complete or incomplete set of to do's. So if the to-dos are not complete, they're gonna end up in this array and I can replace it right here. So let's go ahead and test this out now. We can go test, test one, test two. And if I hit clear complete, nothing happens. And let's check a few as complete and the other two go away. About the only thing I need to do now is my filtering is I assume to be broken. Yes, everything breaks because if you remember, my to-do is not a simple string now. It's got a value, so to do dot value. I'll need to update that. My filtering should be working again. Now if I say two, yep, now we're good. And there you have it. We've added quite a few features in a matter of minutes to our to-do list. It was extremely easy to do. MobX made it really, really fun. And look at how little code we have. What is this? We have 35 lines of code in our components and we have somewhere around 30 lines of code between our to-do class and our to-do store class. This is the joy of MobX. You simply get a lot of work done for the amount of time you put into it. Hope you enjoyed these lessons. Have a great day.